Alexander, who's not, do you hear me? I mean it, going to move, by Judith Voist, illustrated by Robin Priest Glaser. They can't make me pack my baseball mitt or my I Love Dinosaur sweatshirt or my cowboy boots. They can't make me pack my ice skates, my jeans with eight zippers, my compass, my radio, or my stuffed pig. My dad is packing. My mom is packing. My brothers Nick and Anthony are packing. I'm not packing. I'm not going to move. My dad says we have to move to where his new job is. That job is a thousand miles away. My mom says we have to move to where our new house is. That house is a thousand miles away. Right next door to the new house, there's a boy who is Anthony's age. Down the street, there's a boy the same age as Nick. There's no one next door or down the street or maybe for a thousand miles who is my age. I'm not. Do you hear me? I mean it going to move. I'll never have best friends like Paul again. I'll never have a great sitter like Rachel again. I'll never have my soccer team or my carpool again. I'll never have kids who know me except my brothers and sometimes they don't want to know me. I'm not packing. I'm not going to move. Nick says I'm a fool and should get a brain transplant. Anthony says I'm being immature. My mom and dad says that after a while I'll get used to living a thousand miles from everything. Never. Not ever. No way. Uh-uh. N-O. I maybe could stay and live with the Baldwins. They've got a dog. I always wanted a dog. I maybe could stay here and live with the Roonies. They've got six girls. They always wanted one boy. I maybe could stay here and live with Mr. and Mrs. Oberdorfer. They always give great treats on Halloween. I maybe could stay here and live by myself in maybe a tree house or maybe a tent or maybe a cave. Nick says I could live in the zoo with all the other animals. Anthony says I'm being immature. My dad says I should take a last look at all my special places. I'm taking a look, but it won't be my last. I looked at the Rooney's roof, which I once climbed out on, but then I couldn't climb back in until the fire department came and helped me. I looked at Pearson's drugstore, where they once said my mom had to pay them $80 when I threw a ball in the air that I almost caught. I looked at the lot next to Albert's house, where I once and for all learned to tell which was poison ivy. I looked at my school, where even Miss Snoop, the teacher I once spilled the goldfish bowl on, said she'd miss me. I looked at my special places where a lot of different things happen. Not just different bad, but different good. Like winning that sack race. Like finding that flashlight. Like spitting farther than Jack three times in a row. Like selling so much lemonade that my dad said I would probably have to pay taxes. My dad was just making jokes about paying taxes. I wish he was making the jokes about having to move. I'm not. Do you hear me? I mean it. Going to move. Nick says I'm acting like a puke face. Anthony says I'm being immature. My mom says to say a last goodbye to all my special people. I'm saying goodbye, but it won't be my last. I said goodbye to my friends, especially Paul, who is almost like having another brother, 
except he doesn't say puke face or immature. I said goodbye to my neighbors, especially Swoozy, who is almost like having a dog, except she's the Baldwin's dog instead of mine. I said goodbye to Rachel, who taught me to stand on my head and whistle with two fingers, but she says don't try to do both at the same time. I said goodbye to Seymour, the cleaners, who, even if it's gum wrappers and an old tooth, always saves me the stuff I leave in my pockets. I said a lot of goodbyes to a lot of people and I got a lot of hugs and kisses. Enough to hugs and kisses to last a person's whole life. I said a lot of goodbyes, except I'm staying right here. I'm not going to move. When the movers come to put my bedroom furniture on their truck, maybe I'll bark in my bedroom door. My dad wants to tie my bicycle to the roof rack on top of the station wagon. Maybe I'll lock up my bike and bury the key. When my mom says, finish packing up, it's time for us to get going. Maybe she'll look around and she won't see me. I know places to hide where they never find me. Like behind the racks of clothes at Seymour's The Cleaners. Like underneath the piano in Eddie's basement. Like inside the pickle burrow at Friendly's Market. Or maybe I could hide in the weeds in the lot next to Albert's house. Now that I know how to tell which is poison ivy. I'd rather have poison ivy than have to move. My dad says it might take a while, but I'll find a new soccer team. He says it might take a while, but I'll find boys my age. He also says that sometimes, when a person moves away, his father might need to let him get a dog to be his friend until he makes some people friends. I think Swoozy too would be a good name. My mom says it might take a while, but we'll find a great sitter. She says it might take a while, but we'll find a cleaners who even saves gum wrappers and old teeth. She also says that sometimes when a person moves away, his mother might let him call his best friend long distance. I already know the telephone number by heart. Paul gave me a baseball cap. Rachel gave me a backpack that glows in the dark. Mr. and Mrs. Oberdorfer gave us treats to eat for a thousand miles. Nick says if I'm lonesome in my new room all by myself, he might let me sleep with him for a while. Anthony says that Nick is being mature. My dad is packing. My mom is packing. My brothers Nick and Anthony are packing. I don't like it, but I'm packing too. They better not try to move anymore when we get to where we're going to go. Because this time is the last time I'll do it. The next time they won't make me do it. Never. Not ever. No way. Uh-uh. N-O. I'm not going to move. Do you hear me? I mean it.